This, this, this corridor of freedom program is a long-term development program requiring all city stakeholders to work towards a broader common vision. It is critically important that we secure the active involvement of communities, especially those living in the vicinity of these developments. In order to ensure that these programs are successful, these communities need to be mobilized to ensure that we address the special social economic inequities of which the apartheid legacy has left us. Madam Speaker, Josie at Work, our developmental service delivery model is an innovative paradigm shift for the city. In the future, services will be delivered through partnership between the city and community, utilizing their strengths and assets, thereby creating ownership and job creation over two years. For example, residents and drivers in Johannesburg in future, instead of casting their eye over potholes on the road outside their homes, they will, as community members, begin to work with us to repair these potholes. <laughs> Josie Network Program will allow concerned residents to engage with others via regional forums to be involved in repairs and maintenance responding urgently to vandalism of public property, cable theft, theft of manhole covers, illegal dumping across defined areas. Madam Speaker, the 2014-15 medium-term budget continues to focus on the programs outlined in the Integrated Development Plan and the Growth and Development Strategy. The budget is premised on the underlying principles to one, prudently manage our finances to ensure long-term financial sustainability and resilience. To change the course of the city, increase productivity while doing more with less. Implement programs aligned to the long-term strategy of the city in a coordinated manner. Focus on providing quality of services to all the residents of Johannesburg and to create the socio-economic environment for economic growth, increased employment, increased incomes, alleviation of poverty and inequality. However, this budget was prepared mindful of the current tough economic environment. Though still marked by the deadline, volatility and uncertainty in the global economic conditions have begun to show some signs of improvement in developed economies. The Eurozone and North America, major trading partners of South Africa, have experienced growth through most of 2013 at a pace that is still low and fragile. The geopolitical situation in the Kremlin region has created uncertainty. Performance in some major emerging economies remain uneven and fragile. China, another of our major trading partners has recently shown a sign of weakening economy due to lower industrial outputs and declining exports. The African continent with growth figures, with growth figures above 5% continued to attract significant foreign direct investment. This together with the recent rebasing of the Nigerian economy creates both investment opportunities for South Africa and concerns for our continued continued fragile growth. The South African Reserve Bank Monetary Policy Committee stated on the 22nd of May that despite a more favorable global growth environment, the domestic growth outlook has deteriorated markedly. There is still no end in sight to the protracted strike in the platinum sector and the economic and social costs are escalating and are potentially devastating. Consumer spending also remains constrained in the face of high employment, stricter lending criteria by financial institutions, and the rising cost of living. The ongoing difficulties in the international and national economies required in preparing the budget that we consider the following. One, that there's pressure on disposable income of consumers 
and that will impact on the city's tariff setting. The need to reprioritize projects and expenditure within the existing resource envelope. Balancing remuneration costs in relation to operating expenditure. Availability of affordable capital and borrowing. And potential impact of the weakening sentiments in the South African economy on the city's credit rating. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, of concern in the preparation of the, of the budget are the following. 90% of Johannesburg consumers spend more than the end. Payment of the city services is between number 10 and number 16 in the order of priorities of the residents' budgets. After prioritizing items such as clothing, car repayments, and entertainment, Councillor Mahas. Cheers. <laughs> Given all that, Madam Speaker, today we present for approval a total budget of 47.1 billion for the 2014-2015 financial year. The increase in this budget bears powerful testimony to the determination of the city to confront social deficits in various areas and for new development, infrastructural development around the corridors of freedom. Over the years, the city of Johannesburg has developed a track record of being a trailblazer. In keeping with the multi-year appropriation, the capital budget we're presenting today is 32 billion rands over the next three years, up to 2016-2017. For the first time in the municipal sector, we are pro appropriating a double-digit capital budget of 10.4 billion for the 2014-2015 year. The operating budget of 36.7 billion table today is for the 2014-2015 financial year, while the capital budget is for the three-year period up to 2017. In other words, the operating budget is appropriated for one year and the capital budget is appropriated for three years in terms of the Municipal Finance Management Act. The capital budget has been strategically oriented towards clearly focused areas and progressively meeting the city's long-term needs. It identifies three current development corridors, Reporter, Empire Path, and Tefontaine, for which detailed capital planning and implementation has been undertaken. In addition, we are prioritizing the inner city as well as other areas of the city, including Deep Slot, Ivory Park, Alexander and Surrounds, and the Greater Orange Farm. The budget allocations are as follows, Madam Speaker. The Sustainable Services Cluster which oversees and coordinates the bulk of the city's service delivery obligations, is allocated 22.6 billion of the operating budget, which is 60% of the overall city's operation budget. The three-year medium-term capital of the sustainable services cluster approximates 16.4 billion, representing more than 50% of the city's capital budget. The Environment and Infrastructure, Infrastructure Services Department is allocated an operating budget of 144 million for the 2014-2015 financial year and a multi-year capital allocation council and FIPE of 87 million rents. The department will take policy 
leading role in areas of biodiversity conservation, integrated waste management, rehabilitation of princess mine dump, air quality, climate change, energy diversification, and other green energy initiatives.